Jesus, I just want to let you know that before I start talking on this, I have not left you. And I know that we do not do anything with the occult, honey. No, no, no. Okay. And I am with you until the wheels fall off. Iko robo shata ha ha. And in the words of Medea Hitler, all right. Um, hey y'all, welcome back to Dad Damn Dasher. Today, let's talk about a hot topic, which is Lil Nas X and this Montero thing. Though it makes me nervous and I don't necessarily know how this video is fitting to go through, we gonna talk about it because it's a hot topic. So uh, Lil Nas X released his video for Montero, Call Me By Your Name. And that in combination with these damn sneakers that he's released has caused um, a general public um, uproar and pretty much this video to just go viral. And saying it out loud, I kind of think that that was the point surrounding it, right? So let's get on into it. Uh, Lil Nas X basically has said that this video Montero is his sort of like coming out story or um, him embracing who he is as, as a black gay man. And listen, as a black gay man myself, I totally understand what he means. He's taking everything that the church has said to him, family has said to him, you know, society, you know, says to you in terms of, you know, this is a sin, you're going to hell for this, you know, you shouldn't be living your life like this. And he's flipping it on its head in a very artistic way and making a whole bunch of money in the process. So listen, I feel like there's a lesson in there in terms of taking what was meant or what society says was meant to break you and um, prospering off of it. So in that vein, I understand it and I get it. Um, the visuals in the video are sort of the bone of contention in terms of um, the embracing of the whole devil, um, dancing on the devil, twerking on the devil, um, and I guess really just the whole devil dark aspect of it, right? And so I think if you look at it in a, a sort of societal way, um, it does seem to be very jarring, but if you look at it in terms of an artistic way, it just seems like he's, you know, making a statement about something that is very personal to him and he's hoping that by sharing it, it helps other people, right? I think that the problem that society is having is that, um, and let me just take a, a quick step back. Sometimes what artists do when they're known as child stars or they're marketed to children in the beginning, um, and that's sort of how we met Lil Nas X. He seemed to be a sort of child star at the time um, with the Old Town Road. Now, I probably only listened to Old Town Road once. I couldn't really quote the lyrics if someone paid me to do it right now. But then again, I'm not Lil Nas, Lil Nas X's audience, right? Um, but he was pretty much marketed to children um, or young adults. And that's pretty much how his fame skyrocketed, right? And so less than two years later or about two years later now you're doing this you know these devil images and this imagery surrounding you know things that are not necessarily publicized as as great in society in terms of um dancing on the devil or anything really related to the devil in that in that aspect um or just anything devilish or devil adjacent. I feel like you guys should do a quick drinking game in terms of every time I say the word devil in this video, take a shot so you can be tipsy and you could be um, just like Derek Jackson's wife down to those baseboards cleaning because you'll be on the floor. Anywho, back to this one, focus. Um, people have a problem because they didn't really know you that long as a child star. If we look back on it, Old Town Road was released back in 2019, right? So we're talking about two years or so that people have known you as this, you know, artist, this person who's out in the media and stuff, right? So normally when a child star is trying to break out of that image, we've known them for five, seven, 10 years. We've seen them on Disney Channel, Nickelodeon and blah, blah, blah. And then we see them do these jarring things to basically flip the public's perspective of them and allow them to, to exist in that sort of adult space, right? So I think the problem that people are having with the video and with you right now in terms of Lil Nas X is that they don't really know who you are. I don't think that you were a a child star or just a mainstream artist long enough for us to um, now embrace this whole flipping of your perspective in terms of who you are now, right? So I think that's the problem that most people are having with it and rightfully so, right? But as Lil Nas X has pointed out, that's more a problem of them versus a problem of him, um, which I totally get as well. Just because I'm a very reasonable person, I'm more of a person that tries to go from zero to 30 versus zero to 60 in other people's lives. 
<laughs> I'm a hot mess in my own, but we're not talking about me right now. I'm not a hot topic yet. Um, I feel like there might have been a way to to go from zero to 30 in terms of like, let's stop in Skull and Crossbonesville before we get straight to the devil and the occult, right? I feel like, you know, we could have stopped at the midpoint versus going straight to the damn train station or whatever. But um, I, I think there's value in ripping off the bandaid in terms of how people viewed you and how you want them to view you. And um they always say that when you do something jarring as an audience, as an artist, in the same manner of how when, um, if you remember when Miley Cyrus was going through that whole thing of trying to flip out of that child star thing in terms of um, the Hannah Montana stuff, and then we saw her riding, um, riding a wrecking ball and licking, um, what's his name? Uh, used to be married to Paulette, Paula, um, Paula, Robin Thicke. Uh, licking all Robin thick and with her tongue out all the time and in the poom poom shorts and just like looking like not how a Disney Channel star, you know, categorically should or whatever. Um, we see that happen right in, in the entertainment space, right? So like I said, there might have been a way to go to, to zero to 30. But then again, I think, like I said, there's value in ripping off the bandaid and letting society figure it out for themselves. Um, and he's also released a statement or responded to some sort of person who was coming at him and just said, you know, um, if you decided to market me to to your, your children, that's more on you than it is on me. So, you know, I totally get that. Now let's talk about the separate aspect of it. And before we get off of that, I just want to say, like, I respect Lil Nas X's artistry and his ability and wherewithal to do this, right? Because this is something that could either go very, very well or very, very wrong. Um, and I think that he's sort of banking on what happens when people do these sort of jarring things and that, yes, you're going to alienate some of your audience, but you're also going to gain a lot, um, a lot more people, right? So it sort of balances out. And in the future, you'll probably gain those people back if the music that you're making and um, what you are showing them as an artist still, still resonates with them in some respect. But back to the second issue of this, which is just the, um, the devil shoes. Now, though I go up for Lil Nas's artistry on the whole video front, and I, I understand from an artistic perspective why he chose to go that route, the devil shoes are hard for me. Like, I don't understand. I have never heard of shoes where there's an actual drop of human blood in it. I feel like when you start messing with that occult type stuff and the Ouija boards and channeling the devil and, you know, you know, calling him by his name, how you like that? So, <laughs> there's a problem. Um... And I understand the point of marketing and the point of going going viral because he got with a, 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 a pr pretty much like a secondary shop that's not really affiliated with Nike. And, you know, just to add some basis onto this, Nike has, has pretty much um, issued a press statement saying that they have nothing to do with, with the shoes. Um, it's basically some sort of second manufacturer that's known to take these shoes and create like limited edition designs around them. And they're really trying to quickly separate themselves or distance themselves for this, from this whole devil shoe, the blood, the occult, all of that stuff, which I totally get. Listen, Nike is like, um, you know, there's lots of good Christians, honey, that uh, purchase these shoes. And we're not trying to mess up these sales by, you know, going down your old town road to hell <laughs> with you little Nas X and I'm just trying to you know just bring some comedy into a into a very stressful situation but I don't understand the shoe portion of it other than the fact that it might have been just a good marketing tactic to go along with the devil nature of the video or um that part of the video that has caused so much controversy so like I said, I go up for Lil Nas's artistry in the video and this this new um, this new vein he finds himself in as an artist trying to come into his own both create creatively and also as a person as a you know black gay man. I just I don't I don't understand the shoes. First off, I'm not really the sneaker person um, to begin with. Number one, and once you tell me that there's a drop of blood in it and it's related to the devil and stuff, I'm like absolutely not. But listen, there's people that are into that. Um, and maybe there's, there's some value in, like I said, the shock factor of it all. So, um, let me know what you guys think in terms of this Lil Nas X situation. And do you understand his artistry? Um, do you, do you like the video? Like first off, even before I end, um, from an artistic perspective, the video was good. I, I listened to the song. It's not really my cup of tea, but yet, but then again, like I'm not Lil Nas X's 
audience, right? And so, um, hell, I'm still a, a late 90s, early 2000s host. So I'm stuck in the r and I'm with the Keisha Coles, the Ashantis, um, you know, the, the vintage Mariah Carey and Mariah Carey from today. So that's more my vein in terms of what I like to hear. And also some like... Um, you know, some really good, you know, gangster rap, ow, ow. but you know, we're not getting into that because that's this is not about me. But like I said, um, I think that Lil Nas X made a song for his audience, right? And so I think his audience will gravitate towards it, which they pretty much have by how many views the video has gotten. But um, anywho, drop down in the comments and let me know if you think the song is a bop, if you're there for the visuals, if you'll be purchasing the shoes. There's only 666 of them, Badoom Boom Kush. Um, so, and I think they're all sold out. So listen, somebody is buying them and they're probably going to be very valuable one day, but, uh, let me know what you guys think about it in terms of this whole situation. If you want me to keep following it and keep reporting on it. Um, if you liked what I said, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and stereo at that damn dasher. And until next time, honey, uh, stay away from the devil and cling to the light. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.